Hello there everyone and welcome to a new review on the channel and today we will be looking at a very interesting product and that is Heritage by Gabriel Verlaine and Marchand de Trucs. This is a very interesting um, take on the thought of card and one that is now being kind of rivaled with PTSD or oh is this similar to that, is this different, Is how is it different. This is a very particular effect that I'm going to have to maybe not tell you everything about it, not to spoil the method, but I think it is genius in the way that it works and it does a very good job at what it's supposed to do. So yeah, let's kind of dissect more about what Heritage is right after the intro. Perfect. So you decide to stick around, which means you want to learn more about heritage. So what is heritage? Heritage is a story, first and foremost, in which the spectator is going to be able to replicate a memory of yours. And that is essentially what it is. So I can't really do a performance of this for you because even in the trailer, there is a performance. So you do get an idea of how this works. But even in the live performances in the project, they cut one phrase because there's one phrase that does the entire trick and makes it work. And I feel that if I were to perform this and give that phrase away, it would give away the entire trick and the entire method and it would essentially ruin everything. And for the integrity of this effect and the integrity of uh, Gabriel and the production of this, I won't be able to do a performance because it would, it would essentially give the entire method away. So yeah, but I will tell you kind of a walkthrough of what this is. So essentially you would introduce uh, a story to your spectator. You're going to tell them that you want to tell them a story about your uncle, your grandfather, whatever you want. I'd say my uncle and my uncle was essentially a card gambler and he developed a technique way back when where he was able to essentially know every single card that was dealt on the table and win massive money. So he s developed this technique and he kept winning and winning and winning and winning until he got a, quite a small amount of a mini fortune regarding this technique. So it worked all the time until one day where he decided to play all of his money on the biggest jackpot of his life and he was one off. So he was one off the value of the card on that night and he lost everything. And after that night, he took the card from the table, he put it in an envelope, in this envelope, and he swore that he was never going to play and use this technique again in order to gain money. Eventually, he saw that I started learning card magic and getting passionate about it. And he told me if I was interested in learning this technique that brought him uh, so much pleasure to learn and to apply. But he told me that if he teaches me, I have to promise him that I will never use it for personal gain. I promised. He then handed me this envelope and he said, as long as you have this envelope, you will never use this technique to win money. Do you promise me? I said yes. And since then, I always carry around the card that cost him that misfortune on that night with me at all times. And I'm going to place it here right on the table. And if you're willing as a spectator, do you want to play my uncle in that fateful night? Maybe try a recreation and see if you can maybe develop this technique yourself. And then you would proceed to go through the technique and you would reveal uh, the card. So I can't really go over the technique. I already gave you a hint as to some of the method and that hint is in the trailer. So I think that I'm not spoiling it, but yeah, in the procedure, the freely selected card, I have to say is freely selected, fully freely selected, but then you do say one phrase that changes the entire outcome into your favor, no matter what. So no matter what they say, when you say that phrase, the trick will always work. Okay. So as you can see, this is really story based because you also have the line at the start that I said, and I won't repeat, but for most of you, you already clocked what that phrase is. So it's a callback to the story. But as you can see, this is a story based effect. So the trick works based on the story. It's not name any card. Boom. It's inside of the envelope. It's based around the story. It's based around the plot and it's based around the framing of what you're saying which means that if you're not a storytelling magician, and you don't like to tell stories, probably PTSD will be better for you because that one doesn't kind of weave a web of a story to work. Whereas this without a story, this will probably not work. So if you do not tell that story or a story similar to that, the effect will not work. Simple as. 
So that is essentially what heritage is. It's taking your spectator through a journey of your grandfather, your uncle, or whoever you want in, or a person or a mentor in your life, and then trying to intuit what card was on the table that fateful night where they lost all their money. Okay, so that's essentially what heritage is. It's hard to explain, but I hope I did a good job. But knowing this, where do you buy heritage? How much does it cost? And what do you get? So you can buy heritage. It's heritage from Marchand de Truc, but it's currently starting to get published through major dealers. So it is available through, for example, Alakazam. It is available, I believe, on Vanishing Inc. right now as well. And even at my local magic shop. So you can look at your local magic shop as well to see if this is in stock. This will set you back... Um, I bought this in Canadian dollars, so I'm sorry if I don't get the exact value in in US dollars, but I think it's 30 USD. I believe it's 30 US dollars for this because I paid 44 Canadian, so that's usually the price point. So I think this is 30 USD. And what you get with your money is this envelope. Inside of this envelope, you can hear it rattle. There's a business card that's going to bring you to a link to a PDF in either French or English. So there's no instruction videos about this routine. So you don't get to see a live performance. The only ones that you get to see are in the trailers or if you go online, there's a bunch of uh, performances of Gabrielle at conventions performing this. So you can check that out. But in the actual product, you do not get to see a live performance. But you do get a PDF, you, again, in English or French. It's around 20-ish pages long. And it goes over everything that you need to perform this effect. It is very simple to perform. And then additionally to that, you also get this envelope, which is very well made. And this envelope will allow you to do part of the routine, as well as you get, um, a, you get a, a few cards here. I won't say too much. That will allow you to make sure that you nail on the card that the spectator names and everything works inside of this envelope so it packs flat you can just place this in your wallet or wherever you want and with this envelope you're able to do the effect at any point in time so that is essentially um what you get with your purchase moving on now let's talk about difficulty so how difficult is heritage to perform well heritage is not that difficult to perform because as as long as you learn the script you're good because the way that this works, as I said, is a storytelling trick. So it depends on the script and as what you say. So one step of the method is the script, which means that you do need to say some key phrases that you're going to possibly need to call back to when you reveal. Second part of it is to deliver the specific line during the procedure correctly so that the specter understands why it's there and it motivates why it's there because you just don't want to go and say that line with no reason and they're like oh what's going on right so you need a motivation so you need to motivate that line and then you're going to have to just do a simple move with the envelope in order to show uh that the car that's inside so yeah there's three phases to this and I would say, even though it's easy, I'd say it is more intermediate because it does weave more language and storytelling more so than sleight of hand or gimmicks. Because this is not very gimmicked in, in itself. There's not many gimmicks here. There's not very intricate gimmicks in this pack whatsoever. So yeah, it is pretty much based on verbal cues and language compared to a trick like, for example, like PTSD, which the choice, even though it's more limited, even though you do mention a limitation at some point, then it becomes a free choice. Whereas here, it's really based on your storytelling, which I'm going to repeat over and over again. So yeah, the difficulty, it's not difficult, but I will say it's intermediate because of the way that it's structured. Let's now move into practicality. So how practical is this effect? Well, first of all, as always, carrying capacity. All you need to do this is to carry around the envelope. So you can place this in your top pocket or anywhere you want. As long as you have this envelope with you, you are able to do the effect. So carrying capacity, pretty, pretty easy. Just one envelope and you're good to go. In terms of angles, there's no angles here really. In terms of inspectability, the envelope can't really be inspected, but you won't necessarily have to have it inspected um, whatsoever because the way that it ends, you can just leave the envelope on the table casually and even if they look inside, like for example, if I am to do it like this and reveal the card, they could look inside. There is only one card in the envelope. There's nothing else inside, right? So, you know, if you just leave this on the table like this, and even if they were to take a, a quick peek inside, there's nothing to be seen. So in terms of that, you know, 
it is kind of inspectable, but you don't really want to hand it out to them and tell them, do this, 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 or check it out, right? If you just casually just leave it on the table as you reveal, it should be fine. Plus, they get to handle the envelope during the actual routine, so they hold it in their hand, or you have to place their hand over on while it's on the table. Depending on what you want to do, um, yeah, it can kind of be inspected, but not fully. In terms of the card, the card as well cannot be fully inspected, uh, so that is something to point out as well. In terms of reset, the reset is instant. You just place the card back in the envelope and you're good to go. In terms of repeatability, uh, the effect is repeatable, but I wouldn't repeat it to the same group of people at all because the outcome is, you know, does change, but it doesn't change too much as to maybe dispel people thinking that you're doing something in what you're doing. So the repeatability, not really. And in terms of table, you do not need a table for this at all whatsoever. It can be done standing up without a problem. This can even be done on like Zoom without any issues. Now let's move to where would you perform this? So where would you perform heritage? I feel heritage would work also in a parlor setting. I think that in a small parlor setting or even in a stage setting, you could do this. I feel that if you have this, just like in a clip in the middle of your table as you tell your story to the audience. And if you're doing this to like a parlor stage scenario, you can really get into the story. You could maybe put a music track or whatever you want and really play play up the reveal more so than you would do in a close-up setting. So I feel this works in stage parlor, but it also works close-up as well. The only thing that I will mention for close-up is that you don't want to do this in extremely crowded settings because as I said, it does revolve around language and the story. So if you're doing this, for example, at a wedding where everyone is talking and there's music blasting and you have to tell your spectator, okay, so you know my uncle, and you have to scream in their ear and they're like, what, I didn't hear you? It's probably not the trick for that setting. So I do think that if you wanna do this in more close-up scenarios, it will be better if you do this maybe at a restaurant or somewhere where there's not that much noise and people are able to focus. You don't wanna do this, for example, at a bar where people are not focused at all because it is a storytelling trick. So as I, I'm comparing this to PTSD a lot, but from what I know from PTSD, that one can be done anywhere pretty much because it is very direct and quick in its method, whereas this is not. So that is something to keep in mind, but this still can be done close up or stage in parlor. And as I said, this can be done even through Zoom without a problem. You can just be holding this up while you're talking through this entire Zoom presentation and then you reveal. Okay, so I've kind of said everything that I have to say regarding heritage. Let's get into the negatives and the positives. What are the negatives of heritage? Well, one of the negatives of heritage is the fact that it is very story based, which means that it will, in certain scenarios, you will not be able to perform the effect because it is going to be too loud for people to be able to focus into the story. Second of all, there is a very specific phrase in the effect that will make it work which means that if not delivered correctly, it could maybe get the spectator to think uh, that something is amiss or something is not as it seems or that maybe it's a bit weird that you're asking to do, ask them to do that if it's not delivered correctly. So you do have to mention that as well. And the last thing to mention is that the final reveal is not necessarily something that you can perform at every single table. And then eventually when people talk about it, they're maybe going to notice that something is amiss. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind as well. It's still gonna work because the way that the effect is structured, it makes sense, but it will have some discrepancies that maybe if people talk about, you're gonna need to uh, keep in check. But apart from that, what are the positives? One, I find personally, even though this is a storytelling trick, I find the story very good and I find the structure of this phenomenal. I think the structure that this uses is very good and it fits my style. I also think that the envelope looks great. It looks very minimalistic. I also feel that the cards, the fact that they're aged, they look very nice. I also feel it's simple to do. And I feel like you don't you just place this in your wallet and you're able to do a really fun base routine when the setting arises. And I also think this is something very much so that would work even better in parlor settings than more close-up scenarios. I think this in my head, if I am to use this, I won't use this at walk around gigs, in my opinion. I would use this in a small parlor show or in an intimate one on one. That's where I would use this more so than as a walk around gigging trick. I just really see a place of having this kind of in 
a clip in the middle of your parlor table and have this kind of like an opener or something, I think it would work really, really well in those scenarios. So considering all of this, would I recommend Heritage and what do I give it out of 10? So would I recommend Heritage? I feel that if you're more into the storytelling aspect of magic and really getting personal with your spectators, this is a brilliant thought of card to envelope. If that is your, your thing, I think it is absolutely great. If you're not, if you're more into kind of giving your spectator the choices, more freedom, and have them make the free choices, and then the card hitting 100%, then maybe this is not for you. But granted, for me, I do like this. It is something that I'm going to perform. And um, yeah, I do not own PTSD. I have compared the two because I do, I have followed the threads and everything in the interview. So I do pretty much know exactly how PTSD works. But would I prefer this or that? That really depends. I think it really depends on the scenario. I think in a parlor settings or, or in a setting where I'm allowed more artistic freedom, this would top PTSD any day of the week. However, in settings like table hopping or restaurant or weddings, I think PTSD would be much better because it's much quicker. It doesn't necessarily need a story and it happens uh, up tempo and it goes really fast. So that is something to ponder as well regarding that. But personally, I do like this. I am going to perform this. I am going to carry this around with me and do it when the opportunity arises. But because it's an opportunistic trick and not something I'm going to just do every single time I can, it's not going to get an incredibly high grade. It's getting an 8.25 on 10. Now, I hope I did a good job of explaining to you what this is, not confusing you even more, because again, I don't want to spoil the entire method of this and kind of just give everything away. So I've been a bit more secretive than I usually am in my reviews, but that is for the integrity of the product. So yeah, if you have any additional questions that don't are, that are not like, oh, is this the method? Yes or no? I will do my best to answer them and give you, nudge you in the correct decision to know if you want to purchase this or not. But thank you everyone for watching. Like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you all in my next video. Have a great one. And